Good morning and welcome back to Grace Junction Homestead. I'm having coffee in the garden this morning. It's actually the first time I've done that so far since I've been here. And uh, boy, I've missed this. <laughs> oh. My garden is a, my favorite place in the whole world. You know, I've, I've heard gardening referred to as worship. And I think that I fully, fully agree with that. I, I just, it resonates with me on so many levels. I always call my garden my sanctuary. You know, there's just something magical and grounding about this place. I kind of think, you know, we, we were made here, we were put here. It's where we belong. And I can't think of any other place on the planet where I feel just like more at peace than I am when I'm in my garden with my bare feet in the dirt and <laughs> just a big old mess and getting something done you know and I look around it at all the miraculous life that just springs forward here you know and it's just it's God at work for me you know, in, in such a very personal way. Because, you know, we ask for things and we get things all the time. And a lot of it is just like, it's on a scale much bigger than us. But when I'm in this garden and I plant a seed and I pray over that seed, I can't make it grow. <laughs> I can plant it, I can water it, I can, you know, amend the soil all I want and, you know, put it somewhere where I know the light's going to shine on it and it's going to have good chances um, as far as nature goes, but I can't make it grow. I, I can't control that, you know, um, <laughs> I, I could even sit out here and sing to it, <laughs> but it's not going to grow unless God wants it to. <sighs> And so it feels like every time a little seedling comes up or, or a transplant survives the night, <laughs> that it's like a little miracle just for me. <laughs> and I guess, you know, on the bigger scale, it's, it's for everyone. Every plant that I put in the ground provides oxygen for the planet and provides food for my family, but it just feels personal. <laughs> And so I just love being here and watching everything grow, you know? And even, even when, even when plants fail, you know? Um, like right now I'm having some issues in my garden, thanks to all this wonderful rain <laughs> that I prayed so much for. <laughs> He's a god of abundance and excess, isn't he? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'll tell you what though, I haven't seen a single squash bug yet, but yeah, it's just, um, every day I come out here and everything's grown just a little more and a little more and it just feels like this amazing gift, you know? Anyway, let me show you. All right, so there hasn't been a whole lot of change in a lot of areas of the garden. There's been a little bit and what there has been has happened in just the last few days. Um, nothing in this bed has changed, except maybe things have grown up just a little tiny bit. Not a whole lot yet. Just for orientation, here we are. <laughs> okay. Um, so the strawberries and rhubarb look like they're setting really well. We haven't had any problems with those while we were gone. And you know, I'm so glad that we did raise beds this year. Not just because of the rocks, but because... When we came back, like so much of this was flooded and all my raised beds were fine. <laughs> so I guess for, you know, a year of changes, this was a good one. Um, I guess these tomatoes have gotten a little bit bigger in the last couple weeks. I don't know, maybe for some of you it's more of a drastic change than it is for me because I see it every day. And I still have a lot of trellising to do. I still need to get, um, you know, fencing cut and posts cut. And because I'm going to do, um, 
We went from T posts, which are like three bucks each or three something each, to these things, which have been really, really awesome. Um, I think they're actually made to be for like electric fencing. But then we had the realization that we probably could save even more money, and these are like two dollars each or something. Um, we could save more money if we just get pieces of rebar, like real 20 foot lengths, and just cut them down. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We just haven't put them in yet. But So we'll be doing a lot more trellising over the next week or so. We have a lot of other things we have to get done, though. But, yeah. So things are coming along slowly in some of these beds. Come look at this one over here. It hasn't done just a whole lot. I mean, I think this has come up a little more. And the tomatoes are starting to establish themselves and be a little happier, but they're not doing a whole lot. Um, over here, I think I just put in this trellis. I don't think you saw it yet. But yeah. So, and that's actually a new plant that I bought at the store. <laughs> it's not like anything has taken off that much over here. Um, but they're starting to. I'm excited. This is our melon side, I think. I don't know. I have so much trouble remembering. My memory is just awful. It's laughably awful. Um, this little stump, he's actually kind of cool. Um, we found this out in the woods, or actually I think Reese cut it while we were out in the woods getting firewood. Um, he cut into it and he found like a big old hole and that's on the underside of the log there where you can't see it. And he's like, what's up with this random hole here? And he looks down inside and he sees, oh, there's a nest in there, which, you know, it had been a long abandoned nest, but, um, we just, we brought this home and thought it was so cool and we've kept it ever since and it came all the way from Nebraska. <laughs> so now this, this vacant little birdhouse <laughs> is sitting in the garden just because we love it. All right, so I know you guys will remember this one. This has actually taken off quite a bit. I'm pretty happy with it. Sorry, my footing is really unsteady this morning. I'm only maybe halfway through my first cup of coffee. For me, that is just not enough. So we've decided we're trying to get, <laughs> they're being stubborn. I need to stake that one sideways, but we're trying to get them to go that way so that as they grow, they'll kind of be contained in this little area. <laughs> my sad little pepper. That is our one hot pepper. So we're gonna put it in a five gallon bucket way over there so hopefully it doesn't cross pollinate with all the many sweet peppers we have all right <laughs> let me tell you a story of this poor little pig <laughs> you see this someone at our old house this guy used to sit next to our front door or in various places on our porch and at some point someone came over and shot the thing in the forehead with probably a bb gun isn't that awful he was just the cutest little dude He's kind of a mess right now. He's been hanging out in the garden, but oh, we had awful neighbors. I'll, I'll get into that one day, but uh, yeah, uh, not all of our neighbors were awful. It was just a uh, city people in the village thing, and and then there was us trying to be farmers. <laughs> they just didn't like us. Anyway, um, okay, so our squash plants are just barely starting to take off here. I've been trying to train them up the trellis but they're being stubborn they'll get there though sometimes it really just takes time all right my poor poor tomatoes you want to see what the moisture is doing we've got fungus people this awful leaf spot is for the most part from rain splashing up and um and just things being really wet and it's flooding like crazy so there's not a lot i can do um, I am going to get out here later with some neem oil and see what I can do to save these, but yeah, that's just, it's awful. For now though, I'm just going to do what I usually do that's usually enough, but this year and in this place, it's not. I'm just like taking all the, I, I don't know. I usually have really twiggy tomatoes. Um, you know, they usually have these long stems and not much near the ground for this reason. And, you know, once they reach a certain height, they're going to bush out and they'll be fine. And they won't miss their their lower leaves. But for now, they look <laughs> like sad, sad trees, don't they? <laughs> anyway, so, 
yeah, if you find yourself with this issue here, this is a fungus. <laughs> there are all kinds of things that you can get to take care of it with, and I'm not, I don't know, I haven't really done a whole lot of research on it. It's something that I dealt with a lot in Nebraska, but not really, really bad. It was like the lower leaves would get spotty and curl up on me, and it really wasn't a big deal. So, I don't know, I just nipped off the bottom leaves and it was fine. Anyway, so yeah, our tomatoes are getting really big over here. Pretty happy about that. <laughs> My beds are really weedy. <laughs> I have not done any weeding at all this year. Um, I have continued to plant though. I put in some more beans over here. Um, these bean plants I just bought because I don't, maybe y'all could help me. I don't know why <laughs> this bed is not doing well at all um, like I said I just put in those beans but I mean like I had originally put in these Romas and they're not hardly doing anything they're the saddest looking plants I don't, I don't know what it is about this bed and I had planted I know at the very least I had planted beets in here and I think I put in some flowers and none of it sprouted um, like, obviously these were transplanted in, but I mean, nothing that, none of the seeds that I put in sprouted at all. And the only thing I can think of that is different between this bed and the others that are all doing really well is that we mix straw in with the soil. I don't think anything else. I mean, we did put some manure in there, but no more than the others. So I don't think it's an issue of it's too hot. Um... I, I just don't know. Maybe there was... I don't know. We have other... With the other bales of straw that we bought this year. With this bale. Are growing grass like crazy. And they're growing mushrooms like crazy. And so... Apparently they support life. <laughs> but I'm wondering if there was something... In it or... On it... That... That's causing issues I don't know if you know anything that it might be that I could google or whatever what happened to this bed people help me all right so right next to that one we have got mystery squashes that are kind of taken off finally um and they look like something I'm gonna need to trellis so I'm not gonna get on that uh we got Remember that peppers that I said at like almost every other one was like red and yellow, red and yellow. They're getting bigger. So if you've watched previous videos, they're growing. Over here we're doing really good. And this was really, really weedy. I got ever to spend about, I don't know, two minutes weeding it a little bit. So you can actually kind of see some of the plants. But, you know, obviously these are weeds down in here. And probably right here. I don't know. I'm going to yank them out. I'm really excited about these though. These are those Tanya's pink potted beans. And they're not pink yet, but they will be. I don't know if you can see, not really. It's getting just a little bit of a pink tint to that bean right there. Let me see if I can get the sunlight on it. Well, yeah, you see that rib right there where it's just turning a little bit pink? I don't know why it wants to focus on my hand. Anyway. They're just a pretty little green bean. <laughs> Pink green bean. I really like them. Anyway, so there's a bunch of those in here. And then I'm not even sure what other kind of beans. Uh, my little planters are not doing so well. Uh, while I was gone, they got also a lot of fungal issue going on. Yeah, you see that? It's just, just too much rain. None of that whiteness should be there. And I have pulled a lot. Like I've, I've pruned these like crazy, just to try to save them. But I really just need to get some neem oil out here and just get crazy on them. That's gonna be, I think, my. First line. You see that mildew? Oh, so much rain. I mean, I'm, I'm really, really thankful for the rain on one hand because, well, we have to hand water still. We haven't got our irrigation set up. 
but oh it's been a pain <sighs> all right so ever's bed has really 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 taken off this is our like our happiest squash plant by far i mean i actually i planted these things first like weeks and weeks before this <laughs> but it's so happy over here so so happy we've got little zucchinis in there aren't they cute they're so tiny <laughs> Anyway, I'm so <laughs> I get excited over the littlest things, don't I? She got some flowers, and that's doing well. So yeah, um, our mystery squash plant in Ever's bed has turned out to be a zucchini. Oh, tiny little purple green bean there. Mia's bed is doing really well too. Like really, really well. It doesn't look like we have any cabbage caterpillar thingies yet. Cabbage worms, I think that's what. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, look at her little radishes. Mia loves her radishes. She's getting really excited because they're starting to come pretty big. I mean, not super big, but. This is the first time I've ever really gotten her to do a garden. I've tried before but she just really didn't get excited about it her uh her cucumbers are starting to take off there here's our sweet potatoes i still need to get the trellis up here um i poked in some beets yesterday in the front so hopefully those will come up and do all right and then i can't remember if i put them in or didn't put them in but i was going to at least put in some um morning glories to grow up with because that's actually the family these are in. Sweet potatoes. I don't know if you know that. Hey. Those are not doing much of anything. Um, if you know what to feed melons to get them to grow, well, let me know. Um, let's see here. What did I put in here? I think I just put beets in these two. Just because I need to prepare for winter a whole lot better than I have been. That one didn't get anything in it yet. I got potatoes in that one, that one, and that one. Our grapes are all doing good along here. All right. Now to this one. You can see our green beans are just starting to vine up the pole. Oh, that one's looking good this morning. <laughs> they could be such a pain to train to go up. Like it seems like every time I put in a trellis and these are actually kind of far from the pole I should have well, I didn't, I, I planted them before I put in the trellis, which is backwards. You should put in your trellis first and then plant your, you know, beans, stick them in right below so that they want to go up. But it seems like anytime I have any plants that are supposed to trellis, they want to go the opposite direction. I think it's just a, <laughs> it's just a battle of us versus, versus nature, right? Anyway, we lost a tomato in the storm. It got busted off right there. And I had just a little bit of leaves right here, so I had hope, so I just kind of nipped off the top where it broke, and well, it didn't do well, I think. Oh. You see that? We got more of that. Ugh. There's only so much I can do with these things because they're still small. Anyway, our basil's doing good. On to the next. This one's my favorite right now because it's doing the most. <laughs> yeah. These are getting tall. They're doing good. I mean, we have a little leaf spot on these. Oh, it's getting up onto the higher ones. Anyway, where are they? We have some fruit on this one. This is our one Brad's Atomic Grape. And Royce is getting excited. I planted this just for him. And it's got just this little purple stripes going on them. And they're all tiny, but we're pretty excited. That's actually our first fruit for the year. <laughs> anyway, so these are going, doing good and getting big. They're at least waist, high, waist high. Here's our squashes. They're getting big. They have definitely... <laughs> definitely grown since I was out here with a camera last and I'm still working on training them up but they're not doing too bad there 
and not all of these are the trellising kind like this one is a little round zucchini this is the first this is the first time i've ever grown those so i'm pretty excited but i kind of tried to mix them in you know here and there so that they would trellis and then not trellis and then trellis and not trellis <sighs> i don't see any fruit on these yet though but they're flowering and that's a good sign so look at my little melon aren't these leaves just so pretty I love them. I really, really love them. This little guy needs to go up. But again, with the stubbornness. <laughs> Just fighting the nature, huh? <sighs> These are cucumbers, and they're going up good. Finally. <laughs> oh, you're growing sideways, you stinker plant. Oh, well. We're gonna have to go up eventually. Or not. More little melons over here. We're trying to go up. And now we're back over here. Um, <laughs> so, that I think is all what you saw planted before. Um, or at least most of it. I put in just a little bit of corn over here next to the strawberries and rhubarb. I thought, you know what? I need more corn <laughs> so we're just gonna try to plant something in the ground and see what happens this is really really dry because it hasn't really rained and I haven't watered it yet but hopefully we'll see some sprouting in the next week or so <laughs> it's supposed to be hot and not rain at all so it's gonna be all hand watering and then just yesterday the girls and I put in this bed <laughs> I'm pretty excited about this one. <laughs> These are uh, just place markers for some butternut squash that our neighbors are going to give us. Um, they have too much in their garden, so they're going to, you know, thin it out and give us some. Um, but for the most part, <laughs> this is going to be flowery. Um, I'm going to have like a big trellis that goes all around the backside. And there's going to be just like different kinds of squash, not just these butternut squashes, but there's other ones. And then I think I have some dipper gourds that I just put the seeds in. I know, I'm really, really late. And, um, something else. Oh, African wine kettle gourds. So, if I get a few of those, I'll be happy. If not, it's whatever. But, uh, so there's zinnias in here. And some other mystery flowers that ever planted that sprouted that she doesn't know what they are. I don't know what they are. And then I stuck some beets in here because, well, anywhere I can put beets, I will. Because we, we eat them a lot. We eat the greens, you know, like we steam them and eat them like spinach. And then, um, and then we can the beets. <laughs> Pickled beets. We love them. Um, I'm going to get over here with some more flowers. I'm just, I gotta look at what I've got, and then I'll put more in, but, um, it's so funny, because already I've forgotten half of what I put in here. <laughs> it's, it's a blessing having a bad memory sometimes. I mean, it's really, really annoying, but in the garden, it's kind of really funny, um, because I get to have everything be a big surprise. <laughs> but, yeah, so we've had some growth, and, uh. And I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. I mean, I'm a little bit frustrated with the various funguses that we're dealing with. And not knowing why some things are grow not growing. Um, it's our first year here and I'm really, really got to get used to completely different soil with completely different needs. Um, and different amendments that needs, you know. I. I grew up in Oregon and then I started gardening in Nebraska and both those places just want to grow things and here well <laughs> it's a little more difficult anyway say bye little pig <laughs> we'll see you next time thanks for joining me today guys uh, it's been a long walk through a small garden <laughs> but hopefully you've enjoyed it so until next time, have a blessed day.